Maybe doing it on Sunday morning was not a good idea. <laughs> they've all had meltdowns this morning. I think they've been up too early. Um, we hope y'all enjoy the play. It's, it's just a little, just a little uh, skit, but um, it's about you know it's, uh, the mouse finding the king, and we uh, they practiced it, and they've all done really good. Some are just have gotten shy on me, so. <laughs> Y'all just, I hope you enjoy it this morning. Itsy grabbed his little brother's tail and he pulled him back just in time. Bitsy jumped back and his big eyes grew wide. There were wagons rolling, cows moving, donkeys pulling, and people everywhere. Itsy took his brother's hand and they scampered to the top of the city wall. and Bitsy turned to see a donkey was talking to them. The mice were on the city wall so they could see him face to face. So Itsy and Bitsy turned and ran to tell all of their friends the good news. The mice dashed between feet, hooves, and rolling wagon wheels and ran toward their stable. They scurried up the gate and they found their, their favorite spot in the rafters. From this spot, they could see all of their friends. The horse was the biggest. Rowdy the rooster was perched on a rail. Sheep were crowded in the corner. Charlie the cow grazed on some hay and Grumpy the goat sulked in a corner. He never smiled. He was always mad at someone. <laughs> okay, can we gather? We need to talk. But no one moved. After multiple tries, they turned to Rowdy the Rooster for help. <laughs> the rooster crowed. <laughs> the animals lifted their heads.
rooster said that would never happen. The others snorted, bad, made, and mood in agreement. And the sheep said, kings come to important places. The mice ran to the main street where the busy people rushed around. Lots of busy people, but no king. So then they ran to the city gate where important men gathered. But there was no king. So they scampered over to the camel corral where a king's camel would surely be. But there was no king. They ran to the hotel where sleepy people spent time resting. Lots of sleepy people, but no king there either. So then they ran to the city market where the business people worked all day. Have any of you seen the king? There were lots of working people, but no king. Finally, Itsy and Bitsy began to get tired. It was getting dark. With tears in their eyes, they headed toward home. But when the mice neared the stable, they saw Daniel the donkey, the same one who had told them about the king. Itsy and Bitsy ran up to the stable fence. Daniel motioned with his head to the center of the stable where all the animals stood in a circle. The two mice scampered over and looked. A little baby was asleep in the manger. Daniel, Daniel the donkey explained to Itsy and Bitsy and all the other animals that God sent Jesus to love, help, and save each one of them. And the rooster said, He came for us even though we laughed and doubted you. A tiny tear of joy rolled down Bitsy's nose.
Those ladies have their hands full. And you can see they don't just go back there and let them play. They teach them and they work with them. And when our children's church and the nursery department does a tremendous, tremendous job. And then Brother Ashton's going to come this morning and receive our tithes and offering. Satana's going to do another song while they're setting up. Both Kyle and some of the others will be working around our youth and fixing to put on their skit for this morning. Amen. Brother Rich, would you pray over our tithes and offering this morning? Oh, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for these little ones that you have given us. And thank you for what you're doing in their lives. We thank you for this opportunity to give to you. We take praise and we take your father and we to your glory in Jesus' name.
song this morning. Now this is Christmas Day. We come back some ways and different stuff that's going on. We came to worship him this morning. Amen. We came to celebrate his birth today. Amen. Since I this early, all of our visitors, we welcome you wherever you're from. Appreciate you being in here. Amen. We're with us on Christmas Day this morning. At this time, we're going to turn it to our youth department. And this is Brother Kyle and Sister Heather's department. Amen. I'm sure you will be blessed this morning. Worship with these young people this morning. Baby 
Amen. Give them all another hand for that. What Mary didn't know, man, when that baby was born, she knew it was going to be special. She knew he was not an ordinary child. She knew, amen, that he was the, uh, the, the son of God. Amen. The angel told her, thou art highly favored among women. Amen. She said, how can this be that I know not a man? He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and you shall conceive, and you shall bear a son. Amen. You shall call his name Emmanuel, for he will be, amen, God is with us. Amen. Give all these another hand today. Our baby is still flashing in the youth department. Amen. We're going to get one more song to get into the word this morning. Amen. Just worship the Lord this morning. Amen. For just a few minutes. Wherever you're from, does not matter. Wherever you uh, go to church, you just feel free to worship the Lord. I say all the time. The Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. And where His Spirit is, and it's in this house this morning. So you have freedom to worship Him. We're all just one big family anyway. Amen. But we're the family of God today. So you just worship the Lord this morning. Oh, 
said, I like to feel what I feel when I feel what I feel right now. Amen. It's been stirring in here. Been stirring all week long. Amen. God has just ministered to us amen, through the Christmas season. And I hope you had a wonderful Christmas season. Amen. Well, we appreciate you and all that you've done. Amen. As you looked around this week, we had some, some terrible weather, some cold and some wind and some rain. We had a beautiful nativity out here. Uh, Thursday night, and then they decided to go down on us. We thought we had it braced and everything, but I didn't know we had 50 to 60 mile an hour winds at one time. Amen. But God's still good. Doesn't change who God is. Amen. You have your Bibles this morning for just a few minutes. I'm not going to hold you too long this morning. Man, Sister Brandy made good on me, brought my wife from us. She bought my wife an earth gun. She's got it loaded in the lock. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they tried it out before they left home. It'll reach me, I promise. <laughs> Amen. She said, it's got six shots. If that don't work, she's just leaving me here. <laughs> so somebody count. If you count all six, the door will be locked in a few minutes. Amen. Oh, okay. We have had a great time. Appreciate you, all our visitors. We're just so glad to have you. Amen. Next weekend, we're going to have a New Year's Eve service here Saturday night at 8 o'clock with some singing, some preaching, some different things. So come back for that. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. I want to preach to you for just a few minutes this morning. Oh, Sister Hannah, last night she put my text on the, on the uh, on Facebook last night on our church. Amen. The church site. Amen. Uh, I mentioned this last week. 
as long as I've been pastoring and preaching in different places, amen, I guess there's not a Christmas that has went by that I've not preached from this passage of scripture. It's one of the most beautiful uh, to me, one of the most beautiful scriptures, amen, because as I said in the beginning, from the Garden of Eden, there had to be a plan. There had to be a way that sin could be paid for. You go through all the Old Testament and all of the different uh, uh, prophets that prophesied. Isaiah prophesied over 2,000 years before Jesus was born. Isaiah prophesied exactly who he would be. Isaiah painted a beautiful picture of what the Messiah would be. He didn't know his name, didn't know a lot about, but he had a beautiful picture of what the Messiah would be this morning. Last Sunday as we preached the need for the seed and covered a lot of it, but I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about the picture of the Savior, amen, of what he would be. But everything that Isaiah said he would be, he still is today. Amen. Everything that Isaiah said he would be, he still is today. Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 1 said, Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation. When at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, and afterward he did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee uh, of the nations. And the people walked in darkness, having seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light has shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and, and not increased the joy, the joy that before thee to the harvest, to the joy of the harvest. As the men, as the men rejoice when they divided the spoil, for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, and the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and the garments shall roll in blood, and this shall be the burning and the fuel thereof. Those five verses that I just read to you is talking about the, the nation of Israel and Israel's hope. He gives them a twofold hope in this chapter. The first hope that he gives to them is that there would be a, a coming Messiah that we're going to read about in verse number six. And then he comes on at the end of that to talk about different things about what the Messiah would be and the advent of everything that would come. So he's talking in the first five verses about Israel in their depression or Israel in their uh, in all of their worst times, uh, amen, in the times when they were in bondage and he gives them a promise uh, in verse number 6, he said for unto us uh, listen to what he said unto us, not only the nation of Israel but also the land of Judah uh, amen, that was there that had been separated uh, and, and, and there's a whole lot we could preach right there about the separation of Israel and Judah, uh, but he said for unto us a, a son, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. May God have his blessing this morning. <coughs> You may be seated across the house this morning. Amen. Israel in their twofold place. Amen. In their twofold place where they were in bondage. He gives to them a twofold hope. Amen. A hope that will bring them the promise of a Savior, of a Messiah. He tells them in verse number three about a light that will shine. The book of Matthew, chapter number four, and verse number 13, amen, 4 and 13 said this, 
But for Matthew 4 and 13, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is above the, the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali. Remember what Isaiah said? Isaiah used those same two words, those same two places, 2,000 years before. Isaiah used the exact same place that Jesus mentions in this chapter, that it might be fulfilled, that which was spoken by Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet saying, Amen, Zebulun and, and Naphtali, Amen, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Verse 16 said, The people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat, Amen, in the region of the shadow of death, the light sprung up. Israel in their darkest place, he gives them the promise of a light that will come. You look around the world in which we live today. You look in the country in which we live today. It's getting dark. It is already dark. And it is getting darker every day. But I have come to tell you this morning that in the darkness of this world, in the darkness of this time, there is still a light that shines. There is still a God in heaven. There is still a God above. There is still a promise that was given. There was still a promise that was delivered. And when that promise was delivered. He brought to us amen redemption. He brought to us salvation. He brought to us deliverance. He brought to us everything that we would ever need in our life. In a dark time amen Isaiah said there will come a light that will shine. Amen. Then we get to verse 6 and he said for unto us a child is born. Unto who? Who is the child born for? He's born for Israel. He's born for Judah. He was born for Kyle and Gloria and Ross and Norman and Nicole. He was born for every one of us amen, that had ever been born before. Even those that have been held in the captivity of death. Amen. From the beginning of time when man died, the Bible said that they were sent amen, to a place called Abraham's bosom. Amen. To be held. But when Jesus was born and when Jesus died, the Bible said in Matthew 13, I believe it is, and verse number 40, that for three days he was in the heart of the earth preaching repentance unto them. Who was he born for? He was born for every man, woman, boy, and girl that's ever been born. For everyone that ever would live. For every baby that never got to see the light of day. For every miracle child that's ever been born. He was born for them. He was born for you. He was born for me. For unto us a child is given for unto us a son a child is born unto us a son is given not just any son Amen. I'm not going to go back and cover that. I talked that. I talked about that last week. Amen. He was just not any ordinary child. Amen. He was not the seed of a man. He was the seed of a woman. Amen. In the book of Genesis, he said to God, told Satan, Amen. There will come a child that will be born. You will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. The seed of a woman. Amen. The seed of Mary that was implanted in her by the Holy Ghost from God. He is the seed of the only begotten God. He is the seed of the God of all creation. Amen. He is the Son of God. Amen. And I said it a while ago and I'll say it again. I'm glad that He loved me enough. Amen. That He loved you enough. That the God of all heaven gave His Son. And that His Son loved me enough. That He come. Amen. And lived here. But not only did He live here. But Brother Pastor, He loved me enough to die here that I could have salvation. He was sent here for you. For you. For you. How many of you got up this morning? You got ready to comb your hair you looked in the mirror. Amen. Anywhere in your house this morning, did you see yourself? Amen. That's who he came for. He came for me. He came for you, and I'll go ahead and tell you this also. He loved you enough that if it had only been for you, he would have came. 
If it would have only been for you, he would have bled and died and gave his life on that old rugged cross. Amen. If it had only been for you, the love of a father. Amen. That gave his son. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. Amen. The empire. Amen. He is. Whether they want to understand it today. Whether they think they understand it today. Amen. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't I don't care who's in Russia. I don't care who's in China. I don't care who's in Japan. They're not in control. The government was upon his shoulders. He was given supreme authority. Amen. To rule over everything. He still today has supreme authority to rule over everything. They may be amen, a Democrat in the White House or a Republican in the White House and whoever's in control in the other places. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God is still in control of it all. He still sits on the throne and he's the one. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that the heart of a king is in the hand of God and like rivers of water he turneth in winter so ever that he will. They're not in control. The government was upon his shoulders. It was given to him and all authority belongs to him today. Amen. Every knee, let me go ahead and just stop, throw this in right here. There'll come a day that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is the supreme authority, that he is the one that was given all the power to reign over it all. Amen. He has the right and the sovereignty to reign over all the earth. And I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit, a little bit more throwing in right here. If you call yourself a child of God this morning, he has the right and the authority to rule over my life and yours. Amen. If I am his child and he is my king and he is my Lord. Amen. He has all the right. Amen. To be the supreme being in my life. The government shall be upon his shoulders. A lot more I can preach right there, but I want to hurry and get done. It said, and his name shall be called five things. Five different things. His name shall be called wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful. That word wonderful, and I'm going to break this down very quickly. That word wonderful means miracle. It means a marvelous thing. It means a miraculous happening. The son that is promised to us will be a miracle child. He will be a wonderful child. He will be, it will be a miraculous thing that happens. Amen. Oh, he was born of the Holy Ghost. And I want to throw this in a, just a little bit before I move on. I thought about this this morning as I was going through this in my mind when it talked about, and he shall be called a wonderful. He shall be called a, a miracle. Amen. We think about his miracle birth. Amen. And being born of a virgin and all of those things. Amen. But if you're in this room this morning and you are saved and you have been born again and bought by the blood of Jesus, do you realize what a miracle that was? Do you realize what a miracle happened the day that he came down? Amen. And gave his life for me and his life for you. But do you realize what a miracle it was? And only the God of heaven, amen, could take, amen, red blood and run down an old rugged cross, amen, and take an old black heart that was dirty with sin and had no hope. And when I was lost and undone and on my way to a devil's hell, he could take one drop of that red blood and wash my old heart and my old life. And make me clean. And take a red blood and a black heart and turn it white as snow. The miracle was not only that he was born, but the miracle was there would be a day that I would also be born when I was dead to sin. And my sin passes. I was born again and given a new life and grow into a new standing. A birth. Dan Tipton sings a song, says, 
I've had a birth I can't remember and one I can't forget. <laughs> Woo! I wasn't there. I wasn't there the day he was born in the stable. I wasn't there the day they wrapped him in swaddling clothes. But my friend, I was there the day that he saved my soul and watched me clean and put me on my way. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. It's a miracle. Amen. You are a miracle this morning. Amen. You are a miracle. Amen. This shall be called wonderful. The second thing, you shall be called counselor. It means to advise or to consult or to deliberate. This name expresses the idea that he is the supreme counselor. He is the one that is qualified to counsel. He is the one that is qualified to give advice on any situation in your life. You ever had a problem you couldn't fix? You ever had a situation you didn't know what you were going to do with? You didn't know which way to turn, which way to go? Amen. But you found yourself at an old-fashioned altar of prayer. Amen. And he'll give you direction. He'll give you peace. He'll give you whatever you need. He'll make, oh, listen. Oh, walked into my mom and daddy's the other night. Daddy had, had the music playing. My daddy loved to sit and listen to gospel music in his older age. And they were singing that song. Sister Hannah sings sometimes. Amen. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Amen. When you don't know what to do, he is your advice. When you don't know how to handle, when you don't know how. Listen to me in this room this morning. When you don't know how you're going to make it tomorrow. You just lean on the wonderful counselor. You just lean on the counsel of God. For the book of Psalms says he loveth you daily with benefits. Amen. What you need for tomorrow he'll load you in for today. <laughs> you give me a ball that would be with God. Amen. Why he shall be called wonderful. He shall be called counselor. When you don't know what to do, just lean on him. When you don't have the answer, just lean on him. When you can't fix it on your own, just lean on him. I'm going to go a little further with that. When you can fix it on your own, lean on him anyway. Because if I fix it on my own, chances are I'm going to mess it up. Amen. I'm good at messing up things. I'm good at messing up. Not really good at fixing. Man, I can tear up most anything. But fixing it's a different story. Sometimes when we try to fix things on our own, you may fix it. And you may make it through it. But I'm afraid a lot of times when we do fix it ourselves, we, we, we wound up shortchanging ourselves. Because my ways, the Bible said my ways are not his ways. My ways are not as high as his ways. And if I let him fix it, if I let him be the counselor, if I let him be the decision maker, I'll come out so much further ahead than I ever would have if I'd have done it on my own. Wonderful counselor. Now you can put the, those two words in, in the original text. Those two words also are put together. He shall be called wonderful counselor. That means he is the miracle deliberator. That means he is the miracle worker. He is the one that works out things that normally does not work out. He is the miracle deliberator. And I'm going to move on to number three. It said, and he shall be called the mighty God. The mighty God. The mighty God. Now, you could preach right here for at least an hour and a half. Amen. 
You shall be called the mighty God. Number one, it says he shall. That word means that he is powerful. It does. He is powerful. It means he is mighty. In, in, in that song. It means that he is strong. And we all know that he is all of those things. But it also means that he is the chief. It means he is the one that is in control. It means he is the one that should be in control. But it also means that he is the champion. Yeah, right. He's the champion. Yeah. But it does not. It, I, I love this part of that text because it, it gets so deep. It, it says he is the, the champion. But it even goes deeper than that, Brother Rich. He, he is not only the champion. You see, if he was the champion, it means he's the one that wins the victory in your life. It means he is the one that's in control. If he is the chief, and, then, and he's the one that may bring you through that trial. But it goes even deeper than that. It means in the arena, it means he is the undefeated champion. That takes him to a whole nother level. That means that in every battle that he has ever fought, that means in every situation that he has ever faced, in every trial that he has ever been called into, when you deliberate with him and you call him into your situation, when you bring the counselor into your life, you have the promise that when you invite him in to counsel with you, that you have the authority and you have the champion that is on your side. But when you call him in to a situation in your life, you have the promise that he will always be uh, the one that will come out uh, victorious. Uh, he has never lost a battle. Uh, he has never fought a fight. Uh, and he has not won. Uh, and he never will uh, because he uh, is the undefeated champion of heaven. He is the mighty God. He is the mighty God. So let's put those three together real quick. He is the miracle counselor. That when you summon him into your life, you have the assurance that you will come out victorious. I'm going to say that again. He is the miracle counselor. That when you summon him into your life, you have the assurance of being victorious. Because he's never lost a battle. He's never failed. There's an old song that said there's a lot of things that God can do. But the one thing that God cannot do is fail. Amen. I've tried him time and time and time again. And I've been in a situation where it looked like that it was hopeless. But in my hopeless situation, he always brings me out victorious on the other end. And he shall be called, look, verse number, point number four. The everlasting Father. The Father of all eternity. The planner of the ages. The Father of all time. The Father of the ages. Do you understand that from the moment you were born, there was a plan for your life? The book of Isaiah said, Before he formed me in the womb, he knew me and sanctified me. He had a plan for my life. Why? Because he is the Father of all ages. Wednesday night we started the study on prayer. I mean, when you start, to, uh, when, when you start to pray, Jesus told his disciples, "When you pray, pray after this manner: Our Father, which art in heaven, He is your Father. He is your everlasting Father. He is the Father of all time. It does not mean that it, that Jesus, the Messiah, is the one known as God because He's not." He's a part of the Trinity. We won't have, don't have time to get into all that this morning. There is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is not the Father of it all, but He is the one that was sent into this world, bled and died. And whenever He rose again on the third day, Amen, He defeated even the enemy of us all. He defeated time, He defeated death. Do you know that in heaven there is no time? Amen. There is eternity. 
What is eternity? Eternity has no beginning. Eternity has no end. He is the everlasting Father. He is the third person or, or one of the persons of the Trinity, which, which makes up, amen, the everlasting, and there's so much right there that I could get into this morning. He is the Father of eternity, and his desire is that you live with him and that you spend eternity with him. I'm going to stop right here and say this, and we'll get the last point real quickly and be done. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. Amen. Amen. The everlasting Father loved you enough to make a way that you become his child. That you could call him, as it said, we now call him Abba Father. We cry out to him. But there'll come a day, Sister Nicole, that I won't have to cry out to him as Abba Father because I will live with him in eternity forever and ever and ever. He is your everlasting Father, the Father of all eternity. The last point says he is the Prince of Peace. That comes from a Hebrew word called Shalom. The Prince of Peace. He shall promote and increase the government, the will of his father. Uh, but there will be no war. There will be no strife. There will be no peace without him. In the Old Testament, we have heard this uh, and read through the stories over and over and over about the cities of, of refuge that they created. If you got in trouble or, 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 or if you were falsely accused, you could run into one of those cities of refuge and, and you could find haven. The people that lived around those cities could tell whether it was wartime or whether it was peace by one thing. If it was a time of peace, the city of refuge, the gates were always standing open. But if there was a time of war, not even not only the city of refuge, but, but when there was war all around them, the cities, the gates would be shut. No one could enter. No one could leave for the safety of the ones that lived in there. Do you realize, have you ever thought that in, in the life of Jesus, I studied this out a couple years ago when I preached this, you can go back through the span of history and there is no time in the history of the world from all that I can find that there was a time that there was no more anywhere in the world. There has always been strife. There has always been conflict. There has always been enmity between somebody somewhere. But history will tell you that for 33 and a half years, the gates of those cities were never closed. The cities of refuge were wide open for 33 and a half years. The reason that they were open for 33 and a half years was that when the Prince of Peace was born, the war had to cease. The fighting had to cease. Isaiah said he will be the Prince of Peace. There will be no war. He will come and bring peace without there being enmity without there being strife. Yes, Herod went after him with everything that he could. But as far as the wars of this world, they ceased for 33 and a half years. But Mary, why is that significant? Because as long as those city of refuge were closed, Brother Rich, the innocent and the guilty had nowhere to hide, had nowhere to run. But for 33 and a half years, when those gates were open, those that were accused, and no matter what they were accused of, could run into that place and find shelter. That brings me to me. I'll use me. I won't even use you. That brings me to the time in my life 
when the book of Revelation said the old accuser, the accuser of the brethren was accusing me and I was living in sin and I was lost and I'm done without God and I had to have a place to find refuge. I had to find a place to find help. And thank God one day I ran to an old fashioned altar Amen. and I found peace at the feet of Jesus. I found peace at the cross. I found peace at the altar. The cities of refuge had to be open. There had to be the war. There had to be peace for anyone to find safety. Isaiah said he shall be called the prince of peace. The prince of peace. He is the one that is in controller in charge of it all and in him the Bible said we have our peace in him when you need a savior when I needed salvation he became my miracle he became the wonderful thing in my life when I need someone to deliberate when I need someone to counsel me he is the only one that is qualified to counsel me when all of life gets out of hand. He is my counselor. When you don't know what to do, he is your wonderful counselor. In situations that seem like you cannot win, in situations where it seems like it is hopeless and that there is no victory, he is your undefeated champion. He is your mighty God. When it is all over and the Father of eternity steps out on the other side and calls us home, we will forever live with him. He is our everlasting Father. When the storms are raging all around you, and it seems that your life is being torn apart by the wars of this world. He is your everlasting father. He is your prince of peace. What about you this morning? What about you this morning? Where do you stand? Where do you stand in your spiritual life today? Where do you stand in your relationship with God? He promised us that there would be a cure. When sin entered, there had to be a cure. There had to be a way. There had to be a deliverance. And he sent unto us his son. And his name was Jesus. Emmanuel. God with us. You know where he is today? still with us. Man, he's still here. He's still God. He's still in control. He is still Lord of everything today. Every head bow and every eye closed this morning. Where are you? Wonder what you say this morning in this room. You said, Brother Barry, I need prayer. I'm not going to make this a long, drawn-out altar call this morning. Wondered if you'd just like to slip your hand up. Yes, God sees his hand already. Brother Barry, I need prayer today. Yes, yes, God sees his hand with every other. Man, this is Christmas Day. This is the day. Amen. That this that, that this miracle was born. And there's no reason you can't have a miracle born in your life today. Amen. What a great, that there's no, I can't think of a greater day or a greater time for you to receive a miracle in your life than on the day that the miracle was born. What about it? You just want to slip your hand up. Preacher, pray for me. Preacher, pray, yes, God sees, yes, God sees these hands. Will there be others? Maybe you're in this room this morning and you don't know this Jesus that I preached about and I didn't there was so much more, and I just tried to hurry and get through this for the second time on Christmas. But, but the, maybe you're in this room this morning, and you don't know him. Maybe you don't have that personal relationship with him today. Maybe you'll say, Brother Barry, I'm lost. I need to know him as my Savior. 
there's no greater day than the birthday of Jesus for you to have a birthday for you to be born again today and maybe you just want to slip your hand up I won't embarrass you I wouldn't call you out I wouldn't embarrass you for anything in the world but would you just slip your hand up say brother Barry I need to know him I need to know him today what about it maybe you just want to slip your hand up brother Barry I'm in a battle the enemy is fighting me on every side, on every hand. He's the champion of your soul today. He's the champion of your soul. You just want to stick your hand up. We're about to pray. I just, yes, God sees this hand. Will there be another? I just want to pray for you. Yes, God sees this hand. Hallelujah. Yes, God sees this hand. Hallelujah. Father, you see every hand. He is the champion of your soul today, my friend. He is the deliverer of your heart. He is the miracle worker of your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's one in the altar. If you'd like to come and pray, you wouldn't be by yourself. Some of you ladies come. Some of you ladies come. If you'd like to come this morning and find yourself a place to pray, we'd like to give you the opportunity. And if you raised your hand, if you would, just stand with me all over the building. You raised your hand this morning. We're about to pray. I want to pray that God would touch you and God would help you and God would bless you this morning. Heavenly Father, right now, God, every hand that was lifted this morning, every need, in every heart and every life, God, I know that you're able. God, you are the champion of our soul. God, you are the one that has the answers when we don't know. When we don't know which way to go, God, you are our wonderful counselor. You are the advisor, Lord. You are the champion of our soul. You are the peace of our life today. God, I pray that you minister in every hand. God, that was lifted in every need. God, associated with that life right now. God, let miracles begin to flow. God, let help begin to flow. Let the power of God begin to rise this morning. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, right now, Lord, in these altars, work of work, God, in every life today, Lord, let your spirit be real and minister. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you raised your hand this morning. We're believing right now with you for a miracle in your life. We're believing that God is going to work out things, but it doesn't even seem there's a way. He is able to make a way. In the name of Jesus, we're believing with you today. Hallelujah.
be called Jesus. Hebrews chapter 1 said, God who at sundry times and divers men spake times past by his prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, whom he also made, whom he also made the world, who, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. When he hath himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty of God. Today he is your Savior. The picture that Isaiah painted was of the Savior of this world. Amen. Give him a hand clap of praise today. Amen. We appreciate you coming today. All of our visitors, we appreciate you being here. We welcome you back anytime and every time that you'd like to come. And we invite you. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come be with us anytime. Amen. Those of you that put in work for our place, Mr. Lindsay and Sister Gloria, and Kyle, Sister Heather, and then all of you youth, all of you young people, we appreciate you so much. Amen. Don't leave without going by and telling them what a great job they've done. Amen. Merry Christmas to you. If I hadn't got to you to tell you, Merry Christmas. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Have a great Christmas day. See you Wednesday night.